From Northern Ireland, we present a comedy for radio by Michael Judge. Roll out the barrel. Uh, uh, hello there. Uh, can I help you? I was just admiring your barrel. Good barrel, that. Yes. Don't make him like that anymore. No. You see that? And that? That's craftsmanship for you. Men don't want to work like that now. It's all machines. No machine ever made that barrel. It's the size I'm interested in. Oh, yes, uh, the size. It is big. You could put a man in there. Uh, th that's right. Uh, if, if you wanted to. <laughs> or a woman. A fine barrel. Uh, what's it like inside? Have a look. Here, stand in this box. Uh, uh, thanks. <sighs> Very sound. Absolutely. Uh, yes, it'll do. You want it? Yes. You mean you want to buy it? Yes. Well, well, I see. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, how much? I hadn't really thought about it. Uh, I've been there a long time. It doesn't really matter anyway. Just send the bill with it. Uh, that's right. Uh, the bill? Of course you're up in Quincy House. Yes. You're Mr. Quincy. I uh, know. My name is Cobb. Miss Quincy married me. Uh, of course, of course. It's just... Uh, it's always been Quincy's, if you see what I mean. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> you're getting a good barrel there. Very sound. For any purpose. That's what I think, too. I'll send it up to you this evening, Mr. Quincy. Cobb. Uh, of course. Uh, Miss Quincy married me. Miss Stella. Yes. Of course. I used to keep a shop. Uh, that's right. Uh, keeping a shop is nice. A little shop. You don't want to let it get too big. If it gets too big, you're down the drain. But a little shop is nice. Uh, what sort? Fish. Of course. I'll make a shed. Eh? A shed. Oh, a shed. That barrel would look very nice standing beside a shed. Nothing surer than that. I knew I'd think of something. You'll need wood. Oh, yes. And tools. Have you any tools? No. Well, I can supply the tools and the wood. Everything. Nails? Nails, too. A complete do-it-yourself kit. That'll be nice. I'll send them all up this evening. Uh, no. I'll take the barrel. It's very big. I can roll it. I'd like to roll it home. Well, the wood, then. I'll send the wood. And the tools and nails. That's right. Mr... Cobb. Uh, uh, very good. Up to Quincy's. Yes. And the bill, too? Yes. I'll help you with the barrel. Oh, oh th thank you. <laughs> now, you're sure you can manage it? Oh, yes, it's mostly downhill. That's right. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Skelton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Tom. Stella! Stella, are you there? In here, Concepta. What's that he's got there? Who? Albert. I don't know. Ask him. Albert, dear? Yes, Stella? What have you got there? A barrel. He's got a barrel. What does he want a barrel for? What do you want a barrel for, Albert? For rainwater. Rainwater? We don't need a barrel for rainwater. Albert must. What? Ask him why. Why do you want a barrel for rainwater, Albert? It's for my shed. What shed? Albert's shed. Albert has no shed. Ask him what shed. What shed, Albert? The shed I'm building. The shed he's building. But he isn't building a shed. Well, he says he is. Huh. Ask him where. Where, Albert? In the garden. In the garden. I can hear him. Why is he building a shed in the garden? I, I suppose it's the best place for a shed. Concepta. There's something sinister afoot. Remember what I told oh, you? That. Yes, well, I, that. Well, I, I just... know I'm. I've been watching him. Oh, really, Concepta? There's no need to really me. I'm your sister. I know what's what. He's very kind. Of course he's kind. It's part of his plan. You don't think he loves you, do you? Well, he, he, he says... says. Well, he, he seems to. Seems. Have you thought about your position? A rich woman, a poor man. What was Albert? before he married you. But that's not important. It was to Albert. You, you know he was a fishmonger. Whoever knew a fishmonger to build a shed? Albert isn't a fishmonger now. No, he's a fortune hunter now. He he loves me. Ah, you make me ill. But, but even if he wanted money, he has it now. Yes, but he has you as well. Well, maybe he wants both. Have you ever looked at yourself? <sighs> well, that's the lot. Uh, with that lot, you could build a shed the likes of which was never before seen in this part of the country. Where are the tools? Here. No craftsman in the country could ask for better. 
Well, there you are. Uh, if you need anything else or any help, you know where to find me. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Wilton. Skelton. Oh, yes. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Quincy. Cobb. That's right. Yes, dear? Why don't you come out? I'm doing my embroidery, dear. Oh, come on out, my pet. It's nice and sunny on the terrace. Oh, would you like me to, love? You know I would. Then I'll come. <laughs> I've put your chair in a nice spot onto the balcony. <laughs> oh, the shed does look nice. <laughs> you can see me working and I can see you. Do you like that, love? Yes, love. I like it too. Where's Albert? Hmm? He went out. Where? He said he wanted to get some nails. Nails? What was that? Hmm? I didn't hear anything. I was sure. It... He's gone for nails. Yes. You're sure? Yes. I should never have let him marry you. You're a way, dear. I should never have gone away. I should have known something like this would happen. But nothing has happened. It's here. I can feel it. I can see it in his eyes. I'm going inside. Now, you may sit in my chair if you want to. Goodbye, dear. Silly fool. That shed. Why should he want to build a shed? In that barrel. My God! The Mamsley bot! That's it! The Duke of Clarence and the Mamsley bot! <coughs> ah! Nothing to worry about. You're sure, Doctor? Yes, indeed. Just a shock. A big flower pot like that crashing down out of nowhere. Is it Mr. By Inches? She's a lucky woman. A thing like that could have killed her. I know. Albert thinks it must have been the cat. That's right. Oh, cats do these things. Unfortunately, cats do these things. Well, I'll be getting along. Goodbye, Miss Quincy. And don't sit under balconies with potted plants on them. I see you out, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, this way. You don't think it was an accident, do you? It must have been. It couldn't have been. Don't you see? Don't tell me you don't see. See what? Your chair. I was sitting in your chair. You often sit in my chair. But this time, don't you see? It was meant for you. Oh, no. What else? It fits. It fits. Six o'clock in the morning. Man must be mad. What did he think he's doing? Stella? Stella? Are you awake? Oh, oh Lord, where is she? Stella? Stella? Oh! Help! 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 Is that you, Stella? Oh, oh Conceptor. Are you hurt? Don't you touch me. I know a bit about first aid. Kill it yourself. What is it? What happened? The conceptor slipped on the stairs. I didn't slip. Come here and help me up. Don't just yes, stand yes, there. Dear. No, oh. easy. Easy. I didn't slip. I tripped over that ball thing. Oh, it's my plumb line. Yes, it was yours. I was wondering where it had got to. I'm sure you were. You, you must have dropped it, love. I don't remember. Conveniently. Uh, you didn't have it, Stella. What did she have it for? No, love. I just thought. Think again. Uh, Mrs. Hipple, the cleaner, perhaps she yes, took it dear. and dropped it on the stairs. Oh, she's very untidy. Perhaps it was the cat again. Hipple didn't have it. How can you be sure, Concept? I'm sure. Well, you haven't hurt yourself, Concept. No. Hmm. Uh, that's good, then. Is it? Yeah, uh, you, you run along, Albert. All right, I, I'll be getting back to my shed. Stella, I'm gone out. Uh, are you? I have some business to attend to. I see. Miss Quincy, sir. Oh, yes, come in, Miss Quincy. Uh, I'm Conceptor Quincy. And I'm Inspector Liddy. Uh, please take a chair. You're new here. Well, yes, but I... Uh, I hope I don't have to remind you of the great debt of gratitude that this county owes my father, Cornelius Quincy of Quincy Flour Millers and Grain Importers Incorporated. Ah, uh, no. Uh, then I am here to ask you to do your duty. We always endeavour to do our duty. I want you to prevent a murder. A murder? Yes. My sister is going to be murdered, and I want you to prevent it. Um, who is going to murder her? Her husband, of course. And his name is... Cobb. Albert Cobb, a fishmonger. At least he used to be till he married Stella. No, he's a gentleman of leisure. You realise, Miss Quincy, that you are making a very serious accusation? Of course I realise it. Murder is a serious thing, and I want you to stop it. What evidence have you that Mr Cobb intends to murder his wife? 
Have you ever seen Stella? I, I don't think so. She's ugly. He doesn't love her. She just thinks he does, but he doesn't. And so he is trying to murder her. Trying to? You mean to insinuate that he has already tried? Oh, yes. Twice. He pushed a flower pot out the balcony onto a chair where she normally sits. But it missed her. You saw him? The man is a murderer, not a fool. I see. And the second time, you did say there was a second time? Yes, that ball thing. A ball? Not a ball, a thing like a ball. A brass thing or copper. It was on the stairs. Oh. He left it there for her to fall over. You saw him? Of course I didn't see him. Is there anything else? He has this barrel. A barrel? He says it's for his shed. But the shed's only an excuse. Oh. His real purpose lies in that barrel. Have you read Richard III? Well... It's by Shakespeare. I know it's by Shakespeare. In Richard III, the Duke of Clarence is murdered by being pushed head first into a barrel. So that is what the barrel is for. Yes. Anything else? I want you to prevent this murder. Has Mr. Cobb ever threatened his wife? No, he's too cute for that. Do they fight? Oh, no. They make love all the time. Yes. It's nauseating. I see. Is there anyone else who can support you in the allegations? Any other witness? Of course not. We live alone. Just the three of us since that murderer came. No servants. Servants are a waste of money. I'm sorry, Miss Quincy, but there's nothing I can do except warn you that it is most unwise to make accusations without evidence to support them. Very well. But you'll see I'll go higher. I'm afraid it doesn't matter how high you go. I'll go to the minister. As you wish. The name of Quincy counts for something in this county. I'm sure it does. But I think you're quite wrong to adopt such an unreasonable attitude. I suggest you go home now You and suggest? Anything you suggest is mere cover for your own laziness and inefficiency. Just you wait. That shed is almost finished. Wait till it is finished and then... Then you'll be sorry. When he has her murdered, you'll be sorry. Oh, dear. Parker! Yes, sir? That was a bit hot, Parker. So I gathered, sir. Tell me, if I um, wanted to buy a barrel, where should I go? You did say a barrel, sir? Yes. Oh, uh, Skelton's down at the bottom of the main street. He has everything. Oh, you can't miss it. Oh, of course, if you want to find Skelton himself, he's generally in the silver kettle. And that's the Pope. Concepta! Concepta! What is it? What is it? Look! Oh, is that all? It's finished, is it? Uh, that's right. Isn't it lovely? You know what I think of oh, it. Concepta, look at the lovely colours. And the windows. And that cute little door. And the barrel. I see the barrel. It's a fine barrel. Oh, I think it is beautiful. What's in it? Huh? Uh, nothing. Nothing? Uh, not yet. We need rain. Oh. We might get some tonight. Well, let's hope so, dear. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. We don't need rain. Albert does. I know Albert does. He wants to fill his barrel, don't you, dear? Yes, love. Oh, aren't those steps lovely? What are they for? For getting up to the barrel. Why do you want to get up to the barrel? Oh, you never know. To get water, maybe. You might have to reach in with a pail. I think it's an eyesore. It ruins our garden. And I think you're a fool ever to have let him build it. She still doesn't like me. Well, just you wait and see. Everything will turn out all right. And it is a lovely shed, no matter what she says. I wonder, will it rain tonight? I'm sure it will. I'd like it very much to rain tonight. Oh, so would I, dear. But anyway, you could always use the hose. To fill it? Yes. It wouldn't be the same. Now, even so, as a last resort. But perhaps it will rain. Ah, don't you worry, dear. Everything will work out all right. Nothing would be finalised without prior consultation with the union's concerned. And now the weather. Ah, good. The present fine spell. Oh, Concepta, why did you switch it off? It annoys me. But the weather. Albert wants to know about the weather. I'm not concerned with what Albert wants. That thing is a nuisance. I don't know why it was ever brought into the house. Oh, but, but we can't be cut off completely. Little sticks. It's heavy. Does the weather feel heavy to you, dear? Uh, yes, Albert. It may rain, then. Oh, well, it feels like thunder. Well, thunder would be good. 
You'd get a lot of rain with thunder. You need a lot of rain. It's a big barrel. It won't rain tonight. Oh, Concepta, you mustn't say that. I hope it never rains. It does feel like thunder. Do you know what I hope? I hope that barrel stands out there bone dry until it rots. But after all the work that poor Albert has put into it, how can you be so cruel? She doesn't really mean it, dear. Oh, Stella, it's raining. It's raining. That's lovely rain. Just what the doctor ordered. It'll fill the barrel. Albert. Yes, dear? Before we were married, you used to go to the public house occasionally for a drink. Yes, dear. Well, well, I was thinking, tonight, as you finish the shed, would you like to slip out for a drink? Just to celebrate. I couldn't leave you. Oh, that's very gallant of you, dear, but, well, you know I don't mind. It's very wet. What's, now, what's a little drop of rain to a man who can build a shed? You have a good Macintosh and galoshes. I really think you ought to go, and I'm sure you'd like it. Well, I would, rather. Well, off you go, then, and button yourself up well. Are you sure you don't mind? Of course not. And what will you do? Well, I, I have this to finish, and, and then I shall probably go to bed. You won't be lonely. Silly. Of course I'll be lonely, but well, I, I'll manage to survive till you get back. I won't be long. Take your time, dear. Bye-bye, love. Uh, goodbye, my love. Goodbye, darling. And uh, don't get too drunk, uh, but have a good time. Oh, don't worry. And I'll bring back that bottle of champagne for the official launching. Do that. That's right, Inspector. It was the size he was interested in. A big bar. The biggest. Well, he has the weather for it anyway. Uh, this cob, uh, he's not in any sort of trouble, is he? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, he's as snug up there as a flea in a goat's leg. There's buckets of money, you know. Mm. Old man Quincy was a bit of a holy Joe, but he knew the colour of a pound note when he saw one, and he never let his religion interfere with his business. Cobb should be all right, then. I tell you, he's the snuggest man this side of the orchard and the... The man himself. Uh, good night, Mr. Quincy. Eh? Cobb? Oh, yes. Uh, good weather for your barrel? Ah, of course. You're Mr. Bilton. Skelton. Uh, yes, you sold it to me. A fine barrel. Absolutely first class. How do you do? A policeman. Yes. Isn't that nice? Well, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, what do you have? Oh, really, if you'll allow me... I couldn't hear of it after the plug you've just given me. Plug? Ah, come on, man, now speak up. Oh, well, then, a small sherry. But really, you're, you're too good. Uh, small sherry and same again over here, please. Oh, you know, I feel I shouldn't have included like this. I believe you bought a barrel from Mr. Skelton. Oh, yes, for my shed. You made a shed? I'm very pleased with it. Uh, this is very nice of you, Mr... Uh, Skelton. Ah, yes. Ah, oh, here we are, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh, there, thank that's very nice. Nice. Well, here's to your shed. It went off all right, then. It's completely finished, just today. Well, I'll drink to that. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's a pity you have such bad weather for the official opening. Oh, no, that's a good evening. The rain is essential, you know. Oh. To fill the barrel. After all, a barrel isn't a really a barrel until it's full. Very true. I'm glad you agree with me. Very true. Uh, so, you see, this is good weather. Good barrel weather. <laughs> Very well put. <laughs> Why did you buy the barrel? I liked it. When I saw it, I liked it. Why? It was big. You like big barrels? Yes. Why? I don't know. They're nice. I like big barrels, too. But they have to be full. You'll have another drink. Uh, you got the message. Oh, no, no. Let me this time. No, my turn. Now, it isn't often I have the pleasure of buying for a master builder. Same again all round, please. And again, please. Oh, right. I, I, I insist, I insist. I don't build a shed every day, you know. You must be very proud of it. Oh, I am. I'm taking home a bottle of champagne for the launching. Uh, we thought it would be nice. We? My wife and I. Oh, of course. Oh, uh, waiter. Uh, my friend here wants a bottle of champagne. Oh, yes, that's right. Anything special you fancy? Oh, no, no. Just the best he has. Uh, we mustn't spur the expense today. By no means. Uh, when I had my shop, I was telling Mr. Felton here about it. Skelton? Oh, uh, yes. I was up every morning at the crack of dawn, cleaning and arranging. Ah, uh, here we are, gents. Same again. <clears throat> and your champagne, Oh, sir. thank you very much. Is that enough? Oh, yes, sir. We keep the change. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, uh, what, uh, oh I see. Uh, but uh, the lights are going. Uh, it must be the storm. Keep your hands on your drinks. Are you there, Stella? Lord, there must be 
old side. Wait till you can be fixed when you're late. Stella? Stella, where are you? Who's there? Is there someone there? The barrel. Oh, my God. He's put her in it. Stella? Stella? Oh, where are the, where are the steps? Oh, here, here, here. Stella? Ah, the lights are coming on again. Ah, oh, thank God for that. I hate drinking in the dark ever since I heard the story of the chap that swallowed a mouse. <laughs> Don't mind him, Carl. The gospel truth. Of course, not everyone could have a swallow like that. He was an ex-policeman. <laughs> ah, but it only goes to show you, you can't be too careful. That was a grisly business. Like all your stories. I really should be getting home. Ah, the night's young. And it has been a great pleasure meeting you, gentlemen. All hours, all hours. Uh, but I must be on my way. <laughs> I want you gentlemen to come up and see my shed. Well, uh, there, there, I insist. That's very kind. Extremely, I call it extremely kind. Uh, then you'll accept? With oh, pleasure. Me too. Count me in. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, now, I, I really must be off. Oh, don't forget the champagne. Oh, no, by no means. <laughs> that wouldn't do at all. Telephone for Mr. Carr. Uh, me? Oh, oh, that's me. Mrs. Carr was on the phone. Oh, dear. Oh, I'd better... Uh, uh, yes, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Another good man gone. We're a dying race. Enjoy your misery while you can. Oh, don't worry, I intend to have it a long time. Oh, I've heard that sort of bravado before. Well, maybe you have had that, and it won't be the last time. <laughs> You're dead right oh, I'm there. I'm sorry, gentlemen. That was my wife. There has been a terrible accident. You, you don't mind, do you, if I go on with my work? Oh, no. It, uh, it helps to keep me steady. You go right ahead now. This has been a terrible ordeal for you. Well, uh, when the lights went out, she must have gone downstairs. She had been talking about the barrel. She seemed to... It fascinated her. She talked about it all the time. Such queer notions. And those steps weren't safe. I told Albert they weren't safe, didn't I, dear? Yes, love. But I heard the scream and then the splash. And I ran down as fast as I could. But it... It was impossible. The barrel was so big. I know, I know. Don't distress yourself, dear. And then you phoned Mr. Cobb? Yes. Well, I dare say that's about all. Will there be an inquest? Yes. Mere formality, of course. But uh, I feel I must tell you, she came to me, you know. Oh? Uh, some days ago. She had suspicions. It seems she didn't like Mr. Cobb. You know how it sometimes is. I can guess. She... Well, to put it bluntly, she had an idea he was going to murder you. Oh, no. Uh, she hadn't been well. I don't think she was able to sleep at night. Well, I don't know if she mentioned this to anyone else, but I don't imagine she would. Let's hope not. Gossip like that is always very unpleasant. Oh, indeed. But anyway, taking all into account, it was fortunate that Mr. Cobb was with me when the accident occurred. You don't mean to say that you believed her? Oh, of course not. But a perfect alibi does help in such a case. And that's just what you had. It couldn't have been better if you had arranged it that way. So even if she had been spreading rumours, people have no grounds for talk. <laughs> we shall probably go away for a little while. You know, it mightn't be a bad idea. We need a holiday, somewhere in the sun. Would you like that, love? Yes, dear. He has worked so hard over his shed. I know, I could see it. It really is a fine shed, Mr Cobb. Uh, yes, well, I suppose I'd better be getting along. You've been very kind. Not at all. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Mrs. Cobb. I only wish it could have been under less tragic circumstances. Yes. Goodbye now. Oh, thank you. Uh, goodbye. Good, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Cobb. <sighs> He's a nice man. Yes. It's funny. Somehow, you never imagine a policeman's going to be nice. We never had a policeman in our house before. Father never would have allowed it. You haven't told me much about your father. I hated him. You like our holiday, Albert. We'll go somewhere warm, away from all this rain. Bask in the sunshine all day long. It has been raining, hasn't it? Yes, dear. Stella. Yes, dear? The hose. Someone used the hose to fill the barrel. Uh, I wanted to surprise you. I thought if you came home and found it full, that it would make you happy. It seemed such a nice idea. It was, dear, and thank you. But you should have emptied the hose. Well, I, I tried. Never mind. I'll do it for you. Oh, thank you, dear. It's nice to have a man about the house to do these things. 
A woman feels so helpless. I suppose it might be better not to mention it. At the inquest, that is. People might misunderstand. I think that too, dear. You know, another shed wouldn't look half bad on the other side of the garden. I'm sure it would be lovely. It had balance. I thought of it before, but, well... Yes, dear. It's all ours now. I could paint it yellow. Yellow would be lovely. Of course, I'd need another barrel. I wonder where I'd get another barrel as big as this one. Perhaps it wouldn't be necessary to get one quite so big. In Roll Out the Barrel by Michael Judge, Albert was played by Louis Rolston, and Stella and Conceptor by Catherine and Heather Gibson. The play was produced in the Northern Ireland studios of the BBC by Roger Pine.